I don't know about you, but I've never really been a fan of influencer lists. Maybe it's because I haven't been on one in about four or five years, but even then, I always felt a little sleazy when sharing these lists. Now, of course, if there was a Forbes top 50 under 50, well, that's a list I can probably get behind and share, but I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. Now, I see these lists all the time in my feed and they're typically shared one of two different ways. The first way is usually by a company within a specific industry. Uh, they create a list, they share it, they publish it, they tag an influencer. And this is a, a smart practice. This is like the early stages of what I would call organic influencer engagement. And even if there's no math behind it, if it's done in an authentic way, it's a really good practice. It's a good way to get your business in front of the right people. But when you're sharing these lists, it's really important to think about the context and how you're positioning this list in the marketplace. If you're doing something like this, it's kind of a waste of time. Even if you tag the influencers in the content, there might be a select few that click on it, but honestly, it's gonna go ignored. It kind of makes you look desperate and it looks very entry level, like you didn't put a lot of thought or effort in creating this content. Like using the word check this out is something that I would recommend you never do. This is something that we did back in the 80s and 90s, I'm kidding. Um, and 20 or 25 influencers is probably your max. You don't wanna go above that because there's gonna be fatigue in, in the content. Instead, I might do something a little bit differently and do it this way, right? It's not self-serving, it's contextual, and there's a level of value and intrigue for people following 5G to click on it. Not just your audience that you're sharing it with, but other influencers who want a glimpse into what other industry influencers are talking about as it relates to 5G. So the second way that I see these lists being shared are typically by SaaS providers of influencer marketing software. What's good about these lists is that there's math and algorithms that are used to stack rate these influencers. Now, I do have a few issues and they're really not issues, but more recommendations when creating these lists. Now, I've done a lot of work in this space and I've done a lot of analytics around influencers. And every time I see these lists, it's the same people time and time again. And the reality is, is that some of these people on these lists are not influential. They should not be on these lists. Now, I'm not quite sure what the methodology is when creating these lists, but you can't just log into a platform, run a report, export it, save as PDF and publish it. There has to be a level of human analysis and rigor in the process. And the reason why is pretty simple. Software today does not give you context. It gives you numbers, it gives you data. The context comes when you look at the data and provide kind of your own worldview and your perspective on a market or a topic. And that's really what gives the data value. And while these lists are a good starting point, rarely do I see the data contextualized kind of in a broader narrative. It has to be more than your top 50, your top 20, your top 10 influencers within a specific topic. Quotes from influencers is not context. It's great content, but it's not good context. I would recommend that time be spent not just analyzing who the influencers are, but what are they talking about? What are topics that are top of mind? What keeps them up at night? Because that level of data provides more value than just a list. Unfortunately, it takes a lot more time to do this, but at the end of the day, the content itself is much higher quality than just a list of influencers published on SlideShare. I have published many of these lists in the past, and what I like to do is I like to take it one step higher and look at a market and analyze the market, analyze the media, the audience, the conversation, the trends, and influencers are a part of that because again, you're providing value to different stakeholders by giving kind of a 360 degree view and context into a particular topic area like 5G in my earlier example. So let's take a quick look on how I might position a report as it relates to a topic like digital transformation. Now in this context, I'm looking at, again, a market, not just a group of influencers. Now quadrant one here represents the top media that are driving the conversation about digital transformation. Not just looking at it from a volume standpoint, but also an engagement perspective. Quadrant two takes it one step deeper and looks at who are the top journalists that are writing about digital transformation. We're visualizing here both volume and engagement within the same graph. So we're seeing which journalists are writing the most about di digital transformation and which ones are generating the most engagement with their audiences. Quadrant three is a very simple trend graph showing over time what's the volume of coverage around digital transformation over the course of a quarter or a year or a couple years. And then quadrant four just represents the top articles that are being shared within our date range. Now here's our very short list of digital transformation influencers. Now I would never say that these are quote unquote the top influencers in the space because everyone defines influence differently. I recommend watching an episode where I define influence using four data points, reach, resonance, relevance, and reference. But what I can say with confidence is that this core group of people write a lot about digital transformation. And when they do, their audiences, their followers, their community engages with that content at a very high level. 
They are also referenced by other peers and other pundits in the marketplace. Okay, so these are the influencers that I would recommend you follow as it relates to digital transformation. So this right here is the money slide. And I think this data is probably the most important in everything because this is telling us what topics are most important to influencers. This is telling us what words, what language, what vernacular they're using when talking about digital transformation. Not just your core topics, but your subtopics. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you want to be relevant to an audience, you have to imitate the same language, the same phrases, the same words that your audience is doing because you become relevant when you speak the same language as your potential customers, as your audiences, as whoever you're trying to engage with in the marketplace. I promise you, I don't hate influencer lists. I do think that there's value in some of these lists for marketers. I just wish that there was more rigor and more time and effort spent putting these lists together and providing more value to those who read them. And that concludes this episode. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any recommendations for future episodes or future content, please let me know. And until then, have a great week. See you next time.